with another our kind of people video and in this video i'm breaking down episode three let's get into it we start the episode off with a throwback that's giving us good vibes but turns out to be a nightmare it's june team time and y'all i ain't gonna hold you i'm really really excited to see more series include juneteenth and the conversation around juneteenth into their content and i love that this is the norm for them to celebrate but here we go again with Aunt Peggy lying. You fell asleep with the TV on, or you was in an episode of How to Get Away with Murder, and you was about to light Teddy's ass up. <sighs> the episode starts off very quick, lots of action and new information. That's one thing that you have to pay attention to, or you have to pay attention with this series because it moves very, very quickly. In the first like seven minutes, we get Aunt Peggy, Angie's nightmare as well as learning how Nikki actually got expelled from school. Moving right along, we see Leah shuts down Angie at the incubator interview, but Angie kind of gets the last laugh after she keys Leah's car on the way out, and I am here for it. Because, child, I have had enough of Miss Leah DuPont Franklin, and I'm going to need her to be taken down a notch. Also, early on at the start of this episode, we finally get to see Raymond and Teddy interact. And it's funny because Raymond is a Kappa, Teddy is a Q. They make a sure to let us know this. And I love the little sprinkle of Black Greek life into the storyline. This is a clear setup for where Raymond is going in reference to initially asking nicely to take his company back, but then he's going to come back and take it by force. And we see this in the preview for next week's episode when he says that he's going to take down Teddy one way or another. Now, back in Leah's world for a second, I know that this is her mother, but we see Leah go and visit her and then start professing her feelings and her struggles and all her shortcomings in this moment like they close. And girl, it don't feel like you like your mother. This is the very first time we're actually seeing you actually interact with her. And then by seeing Eve's crown at her mom's home, this prompts her to pop up on Angie, trying to buy Angela's disappearance, telling her that she knows about the whole paternity suit. And at this point, child, everything is moving entirely too fast for me. But in a positive note, I guess all Angie needed was for Leah to try and buy her, her silence, her disappearance, or whatever the hell that was, to get the courage to confront Teddy because she comes with a powerful and poignant monologue that calls him out for the coward that he is. Now, who is this Teddy with this shaking hand and is so calm? Because we have not seen this man be quiet for a moment thus far in the series and now all of a sudden he's a church mouse ready to move forward and as the oaks bluffs juneteenth festivities carry on we get to see nikki getting closer with taylor who is out of the hospital and doing just fine because they are partying right before nikki's tempers flare and things go a bit left i guess i also have to note that lauren gets out of jail at the start of this episode we should have left sis in there a little bit because i don't think that, that she learned her lesson just yet and in the bomb black man category, Tyreek is applying pressure. He brings Leah to the future site of the new stadium that he's going to bid on designing the VIP skyboxes for and also shares his motivation in the process. Y'all, why is this dude like so perfect? Like, for real, what's going on? They got this gorgeous ass Lance Gross playing this well-to-do bomb black man who seemingly just wants to move forward within his career and find a bomb black woman to build with. Come on, ghost. And okay, y'all, I'm here. I'm here for the show. I'm watching the show. I'm not gonna stop watching the show, but I got a few qualms. Last week, y'all know I mentioned the continuity and pacing. That's what I was struggling with, which is still kind of present, but less of an issue in this week's episode. This week, some ish ain't lining up. Nikki got into a fight and expelled because some girl was calling Mama Eve skillet because of her dark skin. But this is Mama Eve, y'all. Dark skin where? And I'm asking this as a dark skin woman. Little moments of lack of story continuity really take me out and put me in a place of questioning instead of focusing on the story being told. You know what? When I think about it, the math ain't mathing with the Franklin DuPonts either. Them teens kind of like to be coming from Leah and Raymond. What's really going on here? And while we're back to talking about Leah, Leah is the corniest hoe I've ever seen in this episode. Let me say in this episode, child. Because her out of Angie as Teddy's bastard after fighting with her mother and lashing out was just super whack. Then she had the nerve to tell her that she can't run from this. Sis, you the one that's been running and you just told the whole world y'all little dirty secret and she has nothing to hide. Ultimately, this results in the Franklin coming up 
and embracing Angie publicly so that they can dead the scandal before it becomes the talk of Oaks Bluff, which honestly is a brilliant parlay by Angie because it gets them to publicly acknowledge her, place her in the family, gets her one step closer to getting closer to the family in the family business and then getting the information that she needs. And then she also uses it to parlay a space into the incubator program because none of them was seeming to get the hint that she was going to get into this program by hella high water regardless. For whatever reason, Lauren struggles with this whole announcement and the acceptance of Angie being announced as this long lost sister and I'm really trying to figure out what's going on with her. I did like the moment of Lauren at the top of the episode when she comes home from jail and she actually comes out to her father. Raymond responds how he's supposed to respond. Y'all remember how uh, Leah responded? But she does wind up making for up forward when they actually have a conversation towards the end of the episode where they are able to really discuss the secrets, the thing, the expectations and all of the negative around what has been happening within within their family and Lauren honestly reveals how she's struggling with the idea of Angie how she needs her mother to accept her in reference to Taylor and all of those things and Leah does actually rebound in this moment and god damn it just when I thought it was safe to fall in love with Tyreek by the end of the episode we see that he is actually working with Teddy y'all I literally at the start of like breaking down this video watching this episode was like all right i'm gonna go ahead and let myself like this man i'm not looking for the other uh, shoe to drop i'm not looking for the negative we're gonna let him be the good guy dun 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 black women always keep your head on the swivel because what is this it's entirely too many damn secrets in the show for me angie you playing all high and mighty about people lying to you meanwhile you hiding nikki's daddy away talking about he was a one night stand when he's really in jail yes y'all that's how we in the episode did i miss anything let me know in the comment section down below because that's my full breakdown of our kind of people episode three i mean y'all it's giving soapy drama goodness but visually it is to me still stunning and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick beside it I'm still watching I'm still very much so interested and even though I got a few issues in reference to continuity timing and pacing as I watch they do keep me entertained let me know what your thoughts of the episode were in the comment section down below if you're new here hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my I kind of people videos and it's your girl Erica Vane and I'm gonna see you in the next video bye